Hi, it's Paul with RackOutfitters.com, here to show you the installation of the Tesla Model Y roof rack system. Here we have the front bar already installed, and over here on the bench, we'll show you everything that's involved with the installation that applies to both the front and rear bar. So for starters, let's go over the construction of this rack and the design of this rack. So we have an extruded aluminum bar. It's got some substantial weight to it. It's structured aluminum, meaning it's not just hollow. There's actually channels that run in the inside that give it excellent rigidity. Also, the top of the bar, you have a rubber infill, which allows for attachment of certain accessories into the bar. So there's two methods of attachment for certain carriers. is one gripping around the bar and the other gripping into the bar with approved accessories. So we mentioned the aluminum extruded bar. We also have cast aluminum towers on this design and pre-installed locks. Now these locks are Yakima SKS lock cylinders or lock cores. Uh, this is actually manufactured by the US company called Yakima. So they're the manufacturer, the engineers of this design with um, certainly input from Tesla um, along the way because this is completely custom. There's no other Yakima product that, that is uh, designed quite like this. Um, and of course, it's totally custom for the Model Y. So the Model 3 has a very similar rack design. However, it has completely different molded uh, cast um, towers as well as different bar lengths and shapes. So it's totally custom for each tower, front and rear. So a very highly engineered design. So this is the rear bar. Um, we also have the other components here. We've got the end caps, which would cover up the, uh, the end of that tower. And then we also have the rubber bases. You'll notice these rubber bases have an icon that is molded into it to tell you exactly what position it goes. In this case, this is the rear right-hand side. And then that would go on the underside of the tower, and that gives it grip and protection to the roof. So that combined with these 3M adhesive film, which would go underneath, those two have the corresponding icons. It shows you the direction and the position. All of these are all pre-applied onto the vehicle already. Now we also have the attachment. This is a, a fixed point attachment and it is a hook design which grips in underneath the glass into a hard point specifically designed to accommodate that. So it'll hook in and you'll have it extend out through the top. That goes here through the, through the bottom of the tower. And then you'll also have this metal turn knob which threads to that. And of course, we'll demonstrate that on the vehicle in just a moment. So in addition, you have a hex wrench that's included, and that hex wrench is what you use to tighten that, this knob on. And then you also have a tool to help move the rubber trim out of the way to, to allow for easier install of these metal clips. And finally, you have the measuring tape, and here again, you'll notice the Yakima brand name on the measuring tape. As you use this measuring tape, do be careful because it starts not at the end of the tape, but actually at the line where the arrow is. So when you're measuring, there's metric on one side and SAE on the opposite side. Okay, and then we also, of course, have the manual. And when you get the manual, it's important to, of course, review that. Now, the, one of the first steps in the manual is identifying the location where the fixed points are on the roof. So let's go take a look at the vehicle right now. So the method of identification is used based on the end of the glass roof to the fixed point. And so that measurement is, again, start where, where the arrow starts. It's 20, 27. 27.5 millimeters. And basically you don't have to worry about that too precisely because once you've identified that area, you'll see there are markings that are in the glass. They're very faint because it's a dark tinted roof glass, but 
there are markings there to tell you exactly where to insert that uh, bracket. And then the next measurement is from the back of the glass to your hard point. And so you would measure from there to there, and that's gonna help you to identify the exact location of where that is. And you may or may not be able to see it, but there's a line, a line, and an arrow. So a line, a line, and an arrow. And when you apply your 3M adhesive to, to, to protect the paint surface there, there's also an arrow to help further identify that. Okay, so next step, let's go ahead and grab the load bar and the connection. We'll first use this tool. So you have a tall and a thin end of that tool. And we want to get that, the, the procedure here is to move the rubber away from the painted surface. So it may not be possible to access it straight from the top. You may need to come in from the end to do that. And in some cases, it may be necessary to use something to help get it started. Okay, so I got it started. I have a, a little helper tool. It can be something as simple as a toothpick that you can use just to help get it started underneath. Okay, so here's, here's the purpose of the tool. I'm pulling back on it and, and pulling back on that rubber. And then next we have our hook and the hook drops down, as you see, right in line with where that arrow is and then curls upward. And then we can move that tool away. Now, when you have that in place, you can actually feel where it's intended to be. So that gives further confirmation that you are placing it in the right spot because as you go forward, it starts to hang up. As you go this backwards, it also starts to hang up. So it's, it gives you a, a really confident feel of where it should go. All right, so that's, that's ready. I can go ahead and take away this tool. Next, I have my corresponding rubber base. And so that just slides down over those, that threaded post and the top portion of that hook. And now it's all set in place for us there. Okay, now I'll grab the bar. So here you have the bar, which indicates the direction of the bar. So from an aerodynamic standpoint, you have the leading edge, which is the thicker edge, and the thin edge is the trailing edge. That's gonna give you the best aerodynamics engineered that way, and it can't fit on in any other way. So we can go ahead and peel that off. That's just something that protects it in shipping and also just further ensures you know the direction that it goes. Okay, so I'll extend over to the opposite side where I already have that threaded post pre-installed and I just set it down into place. And then I'll bring this side and set it down on into place. And as you can see, perfectly matches up, perfectly engineered to fit that position on the vehicle. Okay, next we've got the threaded knob. Now that is designed with notches and the notches correspond to the notch that's on the tower. So I can just go ahead and begin threading that on. So the purpose of the notches, that is where you'll finish with your tightening so that they're in alignment. That way when you turn the key, it'll engage into that notch. Now, as far as how much tension or how hard to torque, you can go snug with your fingers. And then with the tool supplied, we would recommend not using it in this long high leverage position. Instead, use it in this position and you can tighten that by hand. So technically in the manual, it states 2.5 to 3.5 Newton meters. Of course, most people don't have a tool that can provide that information. They are available. This happens to be one from Park Tool Company called the TW5, and that has a eight millimeter hex on it. And I have it currently set to 3.5 Newton meters. And I'll go ahead and I see here that it's already 
to 3.5 newton meters. I'm gonna loosen it up a touch and then tighten it again. So you can see you can get very accurate tightness just by hand because my sense of tightness with the hex wrench was in line with the, the actual meter reading on that tool. So that feels real good. Now, we've got the line in, in alignment with the notch on the side of the tower, and I can go ahead and turn that into the lock position. So from a security standpoint, and also from a safety standpoint of this loosening on its own, this cannot loosen up through vibration or, or uh, it just coming loose on its own. Plus, you also have a theft deterrent because someone, if they take the cover off, can't remove that. Okay, so as far as the covers go, the covers are directional and there are lugs at the bottom that correspond to the inserts at the bottom of the tower. You just engage those and then, and then snap it on tight. Let me try that again. Okay, nice snug, tight fit. Very streamlined. In this particular case, Yakima or Tesla chose to have the lock behind the tower so that it's just got a nice, clean, smooth appearance. Now on the opposite side, go through the same procedure, tighten that knob by hand, finish it off with your tool. And lock. And install the cover. Okay, so some of the stats on this particular rack design. Uh, for starters, each bar is perfectly level. And also when you span from bar to bar, that is also level as well. So it makes for a very uh, ideal support for gear, whether that's canoes, kayaks, paddle boards, cargo boxes, bicycles. There's a full range of accessories that can work with this Tesla rack. Also, you have the front bar and the rear bar are different lengths. So the front bar is 45 and a half inches wide. So that's the usable space in between these tower covers. So that's the space if you're using this, this connection point where you have the track, that's your maximum usable space. Now on the rear bar, it's actually narrower on the vehicle. That is 40.75 inches in width. So technically anything that's on the back bar has to reach the front bar. So really that is gonna be your narrowest position for certain carriers. So just essentially keep in mind, you've got about 40 and three quarters inches of space, of usable space to use on your, on your roof rack system. The roof rack overall is rated to 165 pounds, evenly distributed. The distance from your front crossbar to your rear crossbar is 35 and three quarters inches. Now, again, we mentioned that this can accommodate a wide range of accessories. Because this is a Yakima manufactured product and it's using Yakima SKS lock cylinders, we have a playlist that includes a variety of Yakima accessories that work on this. And by using Yakima accessories, that allows you to have the complete system key matched. And that's a nice convenience to have with your system. However, there are other brands that also fit, Thule, has carriers that fit into this track. That can be kayak carriers and bicycle carriers, and also a variety of rooftop cargo boxes fit. So although Rack Outfitters does not offer these, this roof rack for purchase, we do offer all these accessories that help you to utilize this rack to its full extent. 
So please see all those links to different products in the product description and also the playlist to learn more about the different carriers that work on this Tesla Model Y roof rack system. I'm Paul with rackoutfitters.com and thanks for watching.